a little too much basil growing on the hydroponics right now, so we're going to make some basil pesto to protect your, your plants from too much transpiration outside in the heat, or protect your reservoir if you have a hydroponic system um, from losing too much moisture because the plants have too much foliage and transpire all the liquid out of your reservoir, whether you have it inside or outside. The hotter the plants get, the more they, they sweat, the more they transpire. So that means the more solution you're, lo you're losing that they're not utilizing. And it also, if they don't uptake the nutrients and utilize the nutrients from your reservoir, that's when you get a, a, a off balance in your reservoir of water to, to uh, chemistry. So we need to reduce that saturation possibility by simply reducing the amount of foliage. So what we're going to do is take a, um, the excess foliage that we get from the basil and make pesto out of it because pesto is the easiest way I've found to preserve uh, leafy greens. So you can do a lot of different things. We're going to make a basil mint pesto today. And uh, what that means is that we just add a little bit of mint to our pesto. Pesto is just oil and garlic. They both have preservative qualities to them. Um, which means if you put things in that solution and submerge it so that the leaves are saturated with the oil and uh, re residuals from the garlic, then at that point you have a very long shelf life. So we've got our pesto inside now. It's all cut and trimmed. And we just need to um, wash it a little bit to get some of the little buggies off like this. And um, there's uh, also some aphids. These were grown hydroponically, which means that the plant doesn't get a lot of the immune properties it normally would from soil life, from the microbiology and all the microbes in the soil using the soil food web. So <clears throat> if, we, if we don't utilize the soil food web and all the organisms in it, we're not getting all the nutrition that we can from the plants, unfortunately. So hydroponics isn't the answer to everything, but in terms of gardening, but um, it, it definitely is beneficial for growing things pretty quickly because you can grow things very quickly um, if you utilize the right ratio of solution. So the reason I'm bringing this up, guys, is because we do need to wash the aphids off. They have a, a film that they put on the plants. It's like a little sticky film, and we just need to wash the that film off and the eggs um, and any any other aphid residuals that are left on here. Um, I don't see a whole lot actually. This has been a, a pretty healthy plant. I've been spraying it with uh, EM, some effective microbes from the vermicast that I've got. I've, I've got a worm bin and I'm using the uh, the worm bin to uh, to create a um, effective microbe solution in the bottom. Basically worm tea, compost tea. You guys have all heard of that. So compost tea is where it's at man. You get all those microbes and you re-inoculate them on your plants and bring back the health of your plants when they're sick or just put it on in general as soon as there's there are seedlings as soon as they sprout even in seeds the uh, the fungi can actually um, fuse with the seeds inside the seeds and then it's it's with the plant symbiotically for the rest of that plants life so it has that that beneficial microbe already uh, inoculated from the point where it's seed so it can grow real healthy now um, like I said, I'm not seeing a lot of aphids on here. Oh, here we go. Oh my goodness. So you can see the aphid eggs all along the stem here. Uh, so they, this, these were the ones that were growing inside. Um, and aphids in general, they, the, the plants are, are not at their strongest when they're being grown inside. They need the sun. Um, especially basil is a sun-loving plant for sure. So this is a plant that definitely benefits from being in bright light. Um, but super easy to grow and you can definitely propagate it in water really easily too. Um, so that's one of the reasons we're doing hydroponics is because we just break a stem off like this and stick it in our hydroponic system and we've got roots coming out in a matter of maybe a week or so. Um, a couple days they start but they really get good roots in a, a couple weeks and then we can put them in soil um, or we can spread them out around the hydroponic systems just to keep it going because basil's so healthy it's something that I think we really need to be consuming on a regular basis. And it's just wonderful. It's a great flavor, um, but we definitely need to get these off. So the point of showing you guys this, a lot of people say that you shouldn't wash your greens. I've been hearing this my whole life, but that is a complete myth because they believe that you're losing nutritional benefits from the surface of the leaves, the, the uh, biological life. But biological life doesn't just wash off like that, okay? They're designed um, to latch on to the leaves, to, to adhere to it, and then they actually form a coating when they come in contact with oxygen so th this kind of film that's created called biofilm here, and I'll show you. If I just take my finger here, you should be able to see that sheen that's created. And I'm, I'm removing biofilm from the leaf right now. So technically, yes, I am removing organic 
um, life, biological life from the surface of this leaf by doing that. But if I wash it in water, you know, all you see is the biofilm that I removed. All right, so there, the biofilm that's around the areas that got hit by water, it's still there. So it doesn't just wash away, guys. The, the biological life, I mean, it rains outside. Think about that. If it rains on your plants, that means you can't eat them because they don't have biological life on them. They, and and nutri they lost nutrition because it rains. It, it makes no sense. So, guys, we're washing these today, and I've never had any, any difference between flavors, washing them or not. I just make sure that I, I dry it real well. Um, and, you know, we're, we're in business at that point. Alright guys, here we go, a little basil pesto for you, and we're going to do this real quick. I'm just going to list everything out. Um, we've got the basil in the basket, garlic down here, mint right here, uh, and mint just for an accent. We don't want to add a whole lot of biomass to, our, um, to what we're creating here, to our pesto. So just a little bit for flavoring. This is um, some extra virgin olive oil. We like Bragg's. Um, Bragg's is a great company. And then uh, we've got the pine nuts here to go in when, when we've got it all blended up. Um, we love fenugreek, so we use a lot of fenugreek uh, powders and seeds in our uh, the things that we create. We're trying to grow it in our yard right now too, but right now we're, this is outsourcing, so we got this from uh, off Amazon. But um, and a little Himalayan pink salt. Uh, sometimes I add a little pepper, but that's about it. So let's let's get rolling here, um, and it's really just this simple. You just cram it all in there. Put a little garlic in, and let's get our oil. Jess is coming home in a few minutes for lunch, guys, so I'm just kind of hurrying up here. I wanted to record this um, so you guys can see uh, how easy this is, but at the same time, i got to cook lunch for my lady, so i got to hurry up. I don't really measure anything. I just kind of go with um, consistency and what we're in the mood for. So normally, the, the, we just add the oil so that there's just a little bit extra in there um, so that we can kind of spread it, but we don't want a lot of oil. Um, however, we do want enough to maintain shelf life, right? The, uh, the oil and the garlic are our preservatives in this situation, so we can um, make pesto and keep it for months at a time if we use the right ratios. Guys, I don't like to blend a long time because when we blend, we're oxidizing our vegetables and we don't want to oxidize them. But with pesto and things like, um, you know, you're making hummus, you got to cut all those beans up and so you kind of got it it's a toss-up what do you want more like flavor and consistency or beneficial properties and our our diet is so loaded with um with microbes and minerals that we really don't worry about it too much but it is good to be aware awareness i believe is key so a little bit of salt here himalayan salt's wonderful Lots of minerals in that for sure, so I need to put that in there. That's good. I like a little salt with my uh, with my basil for sure. All right, guys. Um, oop, get that lid back on. That's why they got that safety feature. A food processor would be better for doing this, but this is what we've got. So this is what I use. Needs a little more oil, guys. Again, oil is the preservative. Um, and it's also just a wonderful thing. Olive oil, we could definitely need to use a little bit more of that in our bodies. A lot of good health properties to that. I don't know if you guys have looked it up, but extra virgin olive oil is wonderful for you. Um, it doesn't turn into toxic chemicals when you put high heat to it. So this is going to settle down in the fridge. Um, but you guys can see that's the consistency. It just is moving. And that's the way we like it because, again, it is going to separate a little bit when all the air bubbles and um, when it, it's not quite as uh, fluffed up. So, you know, before you use it, be sure to mix it a little bit. Um, but other than that, we're good to go with the pesto. A couple pine nuts. Give it a little texture. Um, use it as a seasoning for salad. We can make dressings out of it. Add a little more oil. Turn it into a pasta sauce, guys. That's, that's how you make it stretch. A little more oil, and then boom, you're on it. So that's pretty much it, guys. And now we just put it up, 
Um, we're going to put it in the fridge in a container. It'll be good for several months if you just keep it cold. I almost forgot one of the most important parts, guys. Lemon juice. And fresh is always better, um, but we don't have fresh, so I'm going to put a little bit in here. And that's just to cut down on the tartness. I give it a little more of an acidic kick. Um, and it really balances. You don't even really taste it. Um, for the most part, it, it just really uh, blends in and balances the, the uh, acidity out. Mm. Alright guys, just got home and we got to figure out a way to use this pesto. So we're making a wrap and we're just going to add it right on top. A little leftovers. Got some black bean paste I made. This is really just black beans in a blender. A lot of lettuce around the yard was bolting, so we've got some greens in here that we uh, cooked down. We love artichokes. I don't know anybody that doesn't. So we're going to throw that in there. Just going to roll that up. Put, uh, let's do a little cheese. go some tomatoes basil pesto now these are my two uh, favorite sauces for doing Mexican let's switch it up Let's have a little variety in our lives. Right here. Bada bing. Alright, into the microwave. And there we go. Basil pesto burrito. Everywhere you see around the world that uh, olives are grown, when they're sorted, the, the blended oils mean that all the olives go into one container. All right, you get the green, you get the ripe, um, so the non-ripe is green, ripe is more black, but the black and the green, they're all the same olive. It's just a different maturity stage. So if you get blended oils, you're getting all the, the ripe and the unripe mixed into one barrel and it's all being made into one uh, oil for you. Whereas if you got a specific kind of olive, then they only, they wait until the olives are, are completely ripe and black. So that's the way to go, guys. Get the ones that are ripe. Go with the oils that are specialty oils if you want flavor. Have a great day, guys. Tom Sapp, Permaculture Wilmington. Have a great day.